Mayor, pleasure to meet you again, Thanks, sir. Good to see you. <laughs> Long time no see. Yeah, no kidding. Grab a seat here. Once again, welcome to the city of Taft. Glad you have you over here. If people truly understand what the petrochemical industry does, what petroleum does for them day in and day out every single day, it would just absolutely blow up some of the misconceptions. Just simply take a look around. If you're sitting in your living room and you're comfortable where you are, what are you wearing? Are you wearing just wool and cotton? Are you wearing polyesters and nylons and rayons? The oil and gas industry and the petrochemical industry create so many benefits and all of these things that impact quality of life are things that people are taking for granted. They are essentially putting their heads in the sands and saying, we're gonna drill, baby, drill until we can't drill no more, either by an act of God or because of an act of government. And I think that's irresponsible. The quality of life in the United States of America, the state of California, the globe, is going to be the marriage and the efficient use of all of our available technologies. But if we learn and we're open with each other as different industries, then we can benefit across the board. And that is how we all will deliver the best quality of life generations from now. I was asked by some civic leaders if I would consider serving the people of the city of Taft because in government, we need business sense. And uh, here I am. I uh, was elected to office and I've been reelected three times. I do this for free. I refuse to take any wages or any benefits. Uh, but I take a great deal of pride in it. And I raise my family, this community, my employees live in this community. I own a crane and trucking company, and I actually began my oil field career as a roustabout, which is a very beginner in an oil field, uh, bottom of the totem pole, and I worked my way up. Taft actually began as a whistle stop on a railroad, simply so that the railroad could deliver the consumable goods to help in the development of the burgeoning oil and gas industry and many, many generations of people have grown up uh, in the city of Taft, not just working in the industry itself, but support from the benefits of the industry as well. We are surrounded by tens of thousands of oil and gas wells. We understand the benefits of the industry. We understand the strategic importance of the United States of America being energy independent. We take great pride in being a part of that. Kern County at one point in time was the largest oil and gas producing county in the continental United States. So the industry itself, that is who we are. That is the legacy of this portion of San Joaquin Valley. Arvin making a bit of history today, becoming one of the smallest cities to make their own local regulations for the oil and gas industry. Oil and gas has kept Kern County moving for decades. Now in Arvin, residents are fed up and those in the industry feel unwelcomed. That's Wednesday nice. night, Arvin City Council unanimously here. voted in favor of restrictions on the oil and gas industry. Those in support applauded. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a monumentous thing that we did. We passed the oil and gas ordinance and hopefully other cities with that type of industry uh, will follow. So um, we're gonna be talking today with some neighbors on Nelson Court. And then tomorrow I'm gonna have a conversation with the mayor of Taft about our two cities. I'll see if we can find any common ground. My name is Jose Gurola and I am the mayor of the city of Arvin. You can't deny the fact that living and being next to an oil and gas operations that it emits emissions and that those emissions can cause harm to health. And fossil fuel extraction and production and consumption is a big part of the pollution here in the valley and worldwide. Agriculture is the base economy here in the city of Arvin. Now it's a primarily uh, Hispanic community, over 95%. It is a very young city. Uh, surprisingly, over 60% of the population is under the age of 30. And so when you look at my age and you look at other young people on the city council, 
um, you realize that we're actually very representative of the city as a whole. All right, see you guys later. Essentially what the oil and gas ordinance uh, that we adopted is, it creates a setback. And what that means is no new uh, oil development can occur within 300 feet of sensitive uses, homes, schools, parks, hospitals. My position was not to stick it to oil workers or because I'm against the oil industry. It's because I want to protect the health and safety of my community. That's why I supported the ordinance, because I believe it, it's imperative that we take this action for the sake of, uh, of our economy, for the sake of the, our future. Marvin is one step closer to imposing new regulations on oil and gas production in the city limits. This all comes after Mayor Jose Garola visited the state capitol to talk about an idea of eliminating oil and gas altogether. It hurts me to think that somehow, some way, we have drawn a line in the sand that says we're either going to continue as a society based on renewable energy and abandon all oil and gas, or we will continue with oil and gas and abandon the benefits of renewable. I would truly like to sit down and speak with him regarding his opinion, how he came by that opinion. But by the same token, not just he, but everybody he represents, everybody that elected him, and everybody who lives around him still every day benefit from the oil and gas industry. So this is Nelson Court. My house is over there, Alma's is over there. But over here, this is all Nelson Court. Everybody on this side of the street was evacuated and the oil operations that was the source of the gas leak is this operation over here. You know, you have homes right here and then you have, within a couple hundred feet, you have oil operations. A monitor that we placed here, uh, it's been here for about eight months now, man. So it was developed from the community's you know, perspective. And so right away, you see the pump jack, just a uh, lemon throws away, literally, uh, from the house. Uh, and then right behind you, man, on this side is, is the tank. We've seen this tank in past years, you know, releasing uh, VOCs into the air. And so we could go monitor to monitor the eight monitors that we have here in Arvin, and we and the 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 story is the same. You know, the background levels in this community uh, are sky high. You know, we see fence line oil and gas operations like this around communities like this. You know, in, in small rural communities, uh, and so this is you know one of the big issues here in in, in Arvin. What the city and its residents here, uh, what they're truly experiencing is is not the normal. In fact, it's the exception, and it's really an injustice that um, they're having to suffer through these environmental burdens, whether if it's air quality, water contamination. I know that my opinion of the industry has been shaped by the fact that I've been involved in it for decades, successfully, and, and I am still here, and I am still healthy, and my children and my neighbors and my employees are all still healthy as well. So decades of experience have shaped my opinion. Well, hey, everybody. Hi. Nice to see everybody. I sure am glad you could take time out of your busy day to sit down and talk about what's going on in this world. We have very common needs, whether we live in the city of Taft or the city of Arvin or the state of California or anywhere else. How many people here have family members that have been involved in the industry for a while? It's about everybody. They don't focus on the bigger picture behind the oil. And there may be incidents where there's spills or fires, but that's not our goal. Like, we're more focused on the pros than the cons. There's always gonna be trade-offs, but oil is one of the most widely used fuels that we have out there, and it's really efficient for our community and everywhere around the world that uses it. That's the reality of it. That is a fact. Quality of life is important to all of us. And ignorance is not an evil thing. Ignorance just means people haven't been exposed to the facts. That's what dialogue is all about. It's not about throwing rocks or casting dispersions upon one's credibility. It's about a sharing of realities.
oil will be a critical part of our quality of life for long after I'm dead and long after my children will be dead. We will find more of it, we'll do a better job of removing it, and we will utilize the benefits of it more efficiently every single day. Arvin is full of humble and hardworking people, and uh, it's truly a David and Goliath story when we're talking about putting health and safety first versus a legacy billion dollar industry that's centered right here in Kern County. Despite of that, that we were able to succeed, and that Arvin's story is not alone. Now there's communities up and down the Central Valley that they are suffering. And if we can succeed here in Kern County, the number two oil producing county in the country, then other cities can go ahead and succeed elsewhere as well. And that the power truly lies within the people. If there's support from the community, then they can really um, do great things.